Survivor Philippines premiered on September 19, 2012, as 15 new players were shot with the twist of the season, as former medically evacuated contestants would be getting a shot at redemption as leaders for their respective tribe, with Jonathan being captain for Kalabao, Russell for Matt Singh, and Scoopin for Tandang. And yes, I know we should refer to this disgusting human being as redacted, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to stick to saying Scoopin, so please don't get mad. Anyway, after the marooning, Russell told Matt Singh he wasn't going to make the same mistake as he did last time and take it a bit more easy, only for him to presume with the leadership role, which included him finding a clue to the idol, making him even more of a target after Zane saw him find it. On Kalabao, the newbies immediately targeted the veteran player Jonathan, while Dawson was able to identify Jeff as MLB All-Star Jeff Kent, but didn't tell anyone about it, not even Jeff. On Tandang, Scoopin was the only returning player to keep himself safe, as he formed the majority alliance with Abby, RC, and Pete, leaving the two older newbie players of Artis and Lisa on the outs, but Scoopin was able to make a connection with Lisa, recognizing her from the facts of life. At the immunity challenge, Zane's slow performance cost Matt seeing the challenge, and afterwards, he told the team to vote him out for his poor effort. But then, we saw the birth of one of Survivor's greatest players put a strategy into effect. My my whole reason why I'm throwing my neck on the chopping block is to establish whether I'm running game. Everybody loves me to the point to where they would rather have me as a hindrance than to keep Russell. I took my shot. I'm playing chess the best way I know how. I would like to see Russell gone because I like Zane. He is so funny and he is just like, he's a good genuine person. I would like to see him around. Angie was like, look, please don't go home. Let's blindside Russ. You ain't never seen a move like this in Survivor history. Unbelievably, Zayn went from a dead man walking to literally getting everyone on board to take out Russell, taking full control of the tribe in the process. Oh wait, that's not what happened? First person voted out of Survivor Philippines. Zayn, that's four, that's enough, gotta bring me a torch. Zayn, tribe spoken. Oh well, still legend though Zane. Anyway, episode 2 begins with Angie and Malcolm getting a bit too comfortable with each other, causing Roxy to target the two, as a survivor showman is always dangerous. On Tandang, RC found a clue to the idol and shared it with Abby, but this would also be the start of their downfall, as Abby clearly didn't trust RC. On Kalabao, knowing he was in trouble, Penner realized that the clue to the idol was literally under his nose, and thus found his first idol in three seasons of Survivor. Matt Singh once again lost immunity, sending them to tribal. While Roxy continued to campaign for Angie to break up the duo, her heart play combined with her perceived weakness made her the true target as she was unanimously voted out. Roxy, the tribe was spoken. The uneasiness between RC and Abby continued, with Abby even turned her back on RC and told Pete about the idol clue, to which they would find, with Abby taking his possession. Speaking of the idol, the Kalabaos realized Penner must have found the idol after discovering the missing emblem. Penner then in fact told Jeff about the idol to build trust, but Jeff wasn't having any of it. But despite the chaos happening on both Kalabao and Tandang, they once again beat Matt Singh, sending them to the third straight tribal council to open the season. With Denise and Malcolm firmly tied at this point, they were the swing votes, and in the end, they felt they had to keep their strength in Russell. Sending the cookie lover Angie home unanimously. Angie, the tribe has spoken. Good luck, guys. Pete planted the clue to the idol in RC's bag, and when Abby discovered this, she felt she had betrayed her, and when RC tried to smooth things over, she wasn't having any of it. On Kalabao, Jeff realized it would be silly to go against Penner with an idol, so the 2 plus Carter made an all-guys alliance, to which the girls quickly realized, and made an alliance of their own. On Matt Singh, a desperate Russell went off looking for an idol, as he felt that was his last hope, but to no avail. To the surprise of no one, Matt Singh once again lost, their fourth straight to open the season. The alpha males both campaigned to Denise that they were better for her long-term game, but at Tribal, Denise stood by her day one ally in Malcolm, and Russell officially went down as one of Survivor's unluckiest players as Denise and Malcolm sent him home. Fourth person voted on Survivor Philippines. Oh. Russ, bring me a torch. Russ, chop his buggy. Now a tribe of two, Denise and Malcolm look for the idol together, feeling like there would be a tribe swap coming, and they were able to find it, with Malcolm taking his possession. Instead of a tribe swap though, Denise and Malcolm were simply absorbed by Tandang and Kalabao, with Malcolm joining Tandang and Denise joining Kalabao. Malcolm immediately got into the good graces of his tribe as he won them a bakery feast. However, on Kalabao, Dana began to fall to the elements, and while the medical team cleared her to play, she simply felt like her body would be at a long-term risk if she tried to gut it out for 39 days, and thus asked to leave Survivor. Is this something you're ready to give up on? I guess. Yeah, I can't think. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. Sorry. Not even for a second. Love you and respect you. And, and, and how great it's been getting to know you. 
At the immunity challenge, Katie's terrible performance caused Kalabal to fall behind, leading Tandang to a narrow victory, sending Kalabal to the first tribal. With the men pulling in Denise to their alliance, this left Katie and Dawson on the chopping block, with Dawson being considered a dangerous player strategically going forward, while Katie was obviously seen as the weaker of the two. But in the end, the tribe unanimously agreed that Dawson was a much bigger threat, but she made her presence felt to Jeff on the way out. Dawson, the tribe has spoken. After the episode 6 reward challenge was at a standstill for over an hour, Jonathan proceeded to make a deal with Tandang, trading their rice for the picnic reward, with Scoopin taking charge of Tandang and agreeing to the deal. Due to this deal making, both the returning players became targets, as Tandang was upset at Scoopin for speaking on behalf of the tribe without anyone else really having much of a say, and after Jonathan only caught a bit of fish, Kalabao wondered if it was really the smartest idea to give up all the rice, especially when a self-proclaimed good fish catcher in Jonathan wasn't living up to his claims. At the immunity challenge, Malcolm once again came up clutch for Tandang, when them immunity and sending Kalabal back to Tribal. Carter and Jeff seriously discussed the idea of taking out Jonathan now before the merge, but at Tribal, the guys alliance played it safe and got rid of the outsider Katie in a unanimous vote. Katie, the tribe has spoken. Kalabao and Tandang merged on day 17 as the final 11 celebrated with the merge feast. While doing laundry, Lisa saw Malcolm's idol accidentally slip out and he immediately confronted her about it and she did own up to it and promised she would keep it a secret. In the minority and still not fully trusting Jonathan, Jeff campaigned to the Tandangs that they should take out Penner, with the Tandangs making life even easier, offering up their own RC as a secondary split vote target in case he played the idol. But Jonathan tried to look for cracks in Tandang and found them in RC and Scoopin, with the former being the outsider on Tandang and the latter being the only other returning player, and thus, Jonathan campaigned for the two to flip to Kalabao and blindside Pete. At the first individual immunity challenge, a man and woman would win, with Carter taking it home for the men and Denise taking it home for the ladies. So if Penner and RC on the chopping block, everyone went along with the easy split votes, and at Tribal, even Penner realized he didn't have the numbers, playing his idol, and thus, RC became the first member of the jury, going home in a 4-2 vote after Jonathan neglected the majority 5 votes. RC, Tribe has spoken. After returning to camp, Jonathan realized it was literally him versus everyone and approached Scoopin on looking for cracks amongst the newbies as they weren't even high on the fact that the returning players had to go. But despite tons of campaigning, nothing was working, meaning that 50 year old Jonathan would have to win immunity to save himself. I mean, the odds were already not in his favor, not to mention he was going up against the likes of Malcolm, Peach, Carter, and Denise, and it just doesn't seem like a fair fight. But then, Penner pulled off one of the most shocking and clutch immunity wins in Survivor history. Penner down to two pieces left. Wins immunity, lives to see another day. Oh! So with the obvious target and Penner now safe, all hell broke loose. Scoopin was the original target for being the other returning player not immune, but Lisa, wanting to protect her ally, told Tandang of Malcolm's idol and suggested to blindside him with it tonight. However, P questioned Malcolm about this, to which he denied. So not knowing what to believe, the Tandang switched her votes to Jeff as a safe vote, and once word got back to Jeff that his name was being thrown around, the Calabaz and Malcolm agreed they had to vote as a block, with Pete being their target. However, at Tribal, for some reason, Penner voted for Abby instead of Pete, which sent Jeff home in a 5-4-1 vote. And as much as it must have sucked for Jeff, at least we got arguably the greatest final words in Survivor history out of it. Jeff, the job spoken. I think I've made about $60 million playing baseball, and I want this freaking million dollars in this game. And it's not even a million bucks, it's 600 grand by the time Obama takes it. The next day, Penner pulled out the heartstrings of Lisa in an attempt to get her to flip to the Calabows, referring to her past life as a child TV star. I'm going to pay for my family's whatever. I'm the breadwinner. I've got these responsibilities. Staying for the money. I mean, I mean. <laughs> I, yeah. how do you know? So it's my business too. At the reward challenge, the teams were chosen by Schoolyard Pick, with the Tandangs and Kalabaos choosing each other, and the latter coming out on top, with the four strengthening their relationship on reward, and agreed that Lisa and Scoopin were on the outside of Tandang, and knew they would need to campaign this to them extremely hard. After Scoopin won immunity, the Kalabaos campaigned throughout the day to Scoopin and Elisa to flip on Tandang, with Artis being the safe vote, as Abby made her idol public knowledge to everyone at the previous tribal, while the Tandangs figured they finally would get out Penner this time. At tribal, it seemed as if Lisa was a swing vote, as she made it clear that the Kalabaos 
cowbows had treated her much better than the Tandangs. But when the vote was revealed, it was Scoopin who would flip to the cowbows to save his fellow returning player. And thus, Artis was blindsided in a 5-4 vote. Tenth person voted out the third member of our jury. Artis, need to bring me a torch. Artis, drop a spoke. After Tribal, Lisa made it clear to Abby and Pete that she was flipping along with Scoopin to the Calabaz as well, after their poor treatment of her. Malcolm and Denise would then approach the Scoop and Lisa duo about a Final Four deal, but they trusted Jonathan more and approached him about a Final Four alliance with Carter, with the three of them ultimately being the Final Three. But for some reason, Penny rejected this offer, which would play a massive role in the following episode. As for this round though, with Pete and Abby on the outs and Abby with the idol, the majority six had to win immunity, with Carter coming out on top, winning a second immunity of the season. So the plan was simple now, split the votes on Pete and Abby, with Abby going home if she didn't play the idol. But Pete made a great pitch to scoop in, saying that if he blindsided Malcolm, that would get two idols out of the game and give him even more power going forward. However, at Tribal, the majority six stayed strong, and after Abby saved herself with the idol, Pete was sent to the jury in a 3-2 vote. 11th person voted out the fourth member of our jury. Pete, need to bring me a torch. Pete, trap is broken. Episode 11 began with the auction, and even though she was starving and miserable, Abby knew she needed an advantage and bidded all her money the second she saw a note. Even though it was an advantage for the next immediate challenge, she tried to scare the tribe, implying that she had an idol. But the reality was, she simply had to win immunity to save herself, and for the second time this season, plans would change immensely as the target came up clutch once again. Abby slides down! and guaranteed a one in six shot at winning this game. Yes! So with Abby safe, the alliance of Malcolm, Denise, Scoopin, and Lisa officially decide now is the time to come together, with Penner as their target. However, Lisa, being the kind, loving soul she was, couldn't help herself and told Penner he was indeed the target, and made her final four alliance clear. So with this information, Penner got Carter and Abby on board to vote out Denise, and desperately campaigned to Scoopin and save him once again. But at Tribal, Scoopin stayed loyal to his final four alliance, and despite a great fight, Penner was finally sent to the jury in a 4-3 vote. Penner? Job spoke. Keep your sunny side up and suck eggs. The final six's loved ones arrived to team up for the reward challenge, with Malcolm and his brother Miles coming out on top. He chose Scoopin and his son, and Lisa and her brother to join them, where the three strengthened their alliance. And after a pep talk from her brother, Lisa was ready to make a big move, and this time blindsided Malcolm with an idol in his pocket. However, those plans were once again spoiled, as Malcolm won immunity. So if that plan out the window, the vote was between the two outsiders of Carter and Abby. While Abby was obviously annoying to live with, the four simply saw Carter as too big of a challenge and jury threat, sending him to the jury in a unanimous vote. Carter, Episode 13 starts off with Scoopin winning the reward challenge and brought Malcolm and Lisa on reward, where the three once again bonded and this time officially made a final three alliance. However, both Lisa and Scoopin realized that Malcolm had played a great game and it would be risky to move forward with him. But any plans of taking out Malcolm once again went up in shambles as he won his second straight immunity, guaranteeing himself a spot in the final four. Abby campaigned hard for Denise, saying that she was a goat as opposed to Denise, who would have a great story. And while Lisa and Scoopin agreed Denise was a bigger threat than Abby, the two were both so delusional that they thought they could beat Denise at the end, as opposed to Malcolm. So at Tribal, they took out Abby, keeping Denise, as that would give them the best chance at beating Malcolm at the final immunity challenge. A truly baffling move, and ending Abby Maria's wild Philippines run. Abby? Travis spoke. It's now the finale, and the objective is clear for Malcolm. Win immunity, and you win Safari Philippines. His odds at winning increased big time, as he won the Final Four Reward Challenge, which gave him an advantage at the immunity challenge, as he would get two tries instead of one. But unfortunately, Malcolm's shaky hands would lead to one of the biggest Final Immunity Challenge chokes ever. Just like that, Malcolm is out of this challenge. Lisa drops her ball, scoop and wins final immunity. But just when all hope seemed lost, his ride or die Denise offered to spare him to go to fire against Lisa. Take the deal, Malcolm. Take the freaking deal. Are you willing to commit at all with me? Or at the very least, make it a tie? Well, no, just make a decision. Just go with it. 
Boy, that's still tough to watch. While Malcolm trusted his final three alliance to vote out Denise at Tribal, he began to realize he was in trouble, and in the end, he became the final member of the jury, as Lisa and Scoop and simply thought he was more threatening than Denise. 15th person voted out and the eighth and final member of our jury, Malcolm. Congratulations, Denise. Malcolm, Trevor spoken. Scoop and Denise and Lisa now, a returning player, a child star, and someone who tended each tribal, all while being over 40, a true representation of how crazy the season was. While Scoop and Lisa defended their games, each earning a vote, Denise's story was simply too amazing, and months later, she was crowned the winner of Survivor Philippines, beating Scoop and Lisa in a 6-1-1 vote. The winner of Survivor Philippines, Denise. Thank you all so much for watching this in Blake Minute video edition of Survivor Philippines. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it, and check out my previous installments of this series as well. Let me know if you guys think the Philippines safe Survivor in the comments below, and until next time, have a good one guys.